Hello and welcome. In this video, I just want to do a few more examples of improper inter integral calculations. So we're just going to do some uh, pretty fun examples. And one thing, of course, we're going to talk about is, uh, in this class, one of our favorite functions that we keep revisiting, the which. The, the which function. What I'd like to do now is to actually Let's see what we could find. What is the area under the curve on negative infinity to infinity, i.e. the entire real line? All right, so let's compute this integral. Okay. So to do it, of course, we actually have to break it up into two integrals. Limit as t goes to uh, negative infinity. We'll go from 0 to t of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx plus, and then we're going to do another limit. w is going to positive infinity of zero from z integral from 0 to w of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. All right, this one should be fairly straightforward. All we have to do is, of course, find the antiderivative. And we're going to get tangent inverse of x. We're going to evaluate it at 0 and t there, plus the limit t goes to, or sorry, w goes to infinity of 1 over, um, oops, of tangent inverse of x from 0 up to w. Okay, looks pretty good from here. This integral, of course, um, let's figure out what tangent is. Remember, tangent is a function that looks a little like this. Well, a little bit, eh, I better do that better. Tangent looks a little like this, and it asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, okay? And likewise, all you have to do is, of course, flip that function over, and there is tan, in, tan inverse of x, and it has a horizontal asymptote at pi over 2 as you go the positive direction, and it has a negative pi over 2 asymptote out there going in the in the negative direction. All right, so to put all this together, of course, so what I have here is tangent inverse of 0 uh, minus uh, tan, uh, the limit as t goes to negative infinity of tangent inverse of t uh, plus uh, the limit as w goes to infinity of tangent inverse of w uh, minus tangent inverse of 0. So first off, tangent inverse of 0, those are both nothing, right? And we know the answer here, that limit is simply going to be... Um, negative, a negative pi over 2, plus, so here we're talking about this calculation here, I'm bringing that down, we get that, and then finally, this one, when we bring it down, we're going to get a positive pi over 2. A negative of a negative is a positive, so two halves of a pi equals a whole pi. All right, so what we just proved then is the integral of the width of Maria Agnesi, the integral of the curve of the width of Maria Agnesi, I don't know what you want to call it, is actually equal to pi. So this beautiful bell-shaped curve that we've learned so much about in this class, incidentally, has an area of pi. 
I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so um, so that's a nice just calculation to do, just a little example calculation. Now I want to kind of revisit a topic I think we covered a little bit, is that, of course, we, we need to, uh, uh, we need to, of course, take two independent limits two independent limits when there's a improper integral in both directions. Right, so what I'd like to do here is just go over a simple example of of the kind of thing um, that you can see with this kind of function, with these kind of... Uh, um, uh, uh, what happens... So what we're going to do is we're going to try to... We'll, we'll, we're we're going to break the rule and see what bad thing happens. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a function that's actually pretty straightforward. It's just going to be x cubed. Okay, so if I get a graph going of x cubed, we know that x cubed has a look that looks like this. That's x cubed, okay. I'll draw it out like that. And, of course, if I go in the positive direction, we see the area under the curve will grow without bound as t, if I take that to be my t, goes to infinity, right? Likewise, if I look over here, and I take that to be W, we see the area under the curve also grows without bound as W goes to negative infinity. Okay. So, but if we set up the integral this way, if we inadvertently or mistakenly said that the neg... I want to take this integral here. Let's say I write that down, even though it's, of course, is an improper integral. But let's say I decided to yoke the two uh, limits together. So what I'm basically doing is say, I'm going to say W is equal to negative T. So now these are going to be linked together. Uh, so as T increases... to the right, W goes back left the same amount. So the problem with this, and what you might, what you might anticipate here, is that the idea is that if I have whatever, whatever T is, if I take T to be here, and I take t to be there too, it's going to be, that'll be negative, negative t down here, which is w, and then get that area. Because this function is symmetric, those two areas are going to cancel perfectly. All right. All right, so let's see if I try it this way. So now I'm going to take t going to infinity of, of the integral from negative t to t of x cubed dx. Well, let's actually compute this up. We take the limit t going to infinity, and now we take x to the fourth power over 4, we evaluate it at negative t to t. One fourth can come out front like that, and then we're going to get, of course, t to the fourth minus negative t to the fourth. Okay, so I think now you see the issue, of course, that's going to be the limit t going to infinity. I could bring the one-fourth out front, and of course we have t to the fourth minus t to the fourth, which is going to be one-fourth of the limit, t going to infinity of zero. And inadvertently, that's going to look like zero, 
which is, of course, wrong. Although those areas do cancel perfectly when you set up this integral. So we've done, of course, a correct calculation of this. In fact, they give this a name. Sometimes they call this a principal value integral. And I don't know if that really is very meaningful to, to, to you students, uh, but these principal value integrals, they kind of have an asterisk attached to them. This is like basically the real integral may not exist. Um, and so you do have to worry about that because the real way to do it, of course, is you take this integral here and write it as the limit as w goes to negative infinity of x cubed integral from w up to 0 dx plus the limit t goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to t x cubed dx. And what we find out here, of course, is that is a uh, does not exist integral. And this one here, of course, is also a does not exist. Therefore, therefore, does not exist either. Okay, so that's the correct conclusion. And uh, I, I hope you see why uh, that kind of catastrophic, perfect cancellation of two very large things uh, can't be how our improper integrals exist. Not, it can't be how they converge because that's too fragile of a sum. Uh, anyway, I hope that clarifies some of these more subtle issues with improper integrals. And I will see you next time.